Uh, I'm going to give up the first uh, few minutes of my talk to uh, Manuel Silva, who's representing Coronado National Forest. After four and a half years, and you guys hearing me talk about this, in November we actually signed a three-year challenge cost share agreement with Coronado, and lo and behold, it's just with Central Arizona Grotto. It wasn't with the other other uh, Southern Arizona Grottos. So come on up, Manuel. You said you wanted to say something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you have to come up here because i got to give you something. You have to come up here because I have to give you something. So, so last uh, February, March, I got a burr under my saddle, and I decided to take, grab the other half of this, we'll back up here, and took Langbrode's map and turned it into a digital thing. And that was about 12, 14 days or so. This, this shows, you'll see it in color, uh, this is what was done in September for cleaned. This is what was uh, cleaned in the November effort for two trips. That's, these represent between 250 and 300 uh, tags that were taken off. Congratulations. Did you want to say anything? Um, no, just gonna okay. Here you go. Right. Thanks. All right, here you go. Thank you very much for representing. Yay. Okay. Okay, so the map I just gave him, uh, we'll touch on this on it later, but um, we got the challenge cost share done. We uh, held this carrot for pepper sauce to get the challenge cost share done. Why? Because in the Forest Service, they're, either, they're under budget, they're overtaxed, their staff's getting reduced, and anybody that's good either gets transferred, promoted, or retires. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. Okay. So, uh, we held this, this carrot over there uh, and said, we want the challenge cost share because the people that we train move on. We want to have something so the next person that comes in actually has structure so they can say th these people can be trusted. So, these are the carrots we threw out there. We said that we want to remove all the graffiti in the cave. Since I've put the cave in, did the map, decided to foolishly try and interpret the 1972 to 74 survey, that was the primary portion of it, there was stuff later, uh, of from Lang Broad. Uh, surveying methods were different. One, they didn't start at the beginning of the cave. They started at the beginning of the rabbit hole. Maybe because they just dug into it. Surveys, for those that are into surveys, they started with station one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on station three, they started the next survey when station three went to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which went to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> there are 1129s in the cave. There are 31 threes. That's not bad, but the later surveys were going upside tags. They would start and they wouldn't say where, and they would, they would say, okay, we're starting for station 21. There's 21 of those, by the way. And we'll go f 21, one, two, three, and it's done. Which one and where? So. Uh, Stephanie had to suffer through the computer being on the island in the kitchen and Ray grumbling. Uh, that was sort of entertaining. Okay, so got that in. That was longer than generating the map. So we removed the, the, the carrot was to remove all the graffiti, repair the kiosk that was out front, and reflective outsides. And the reflective outsides are to reduce the arrows that are saying how to get out of the cave. Uh, also getting uh, television news media to uh, try and get the word out that we're doing this. So there's the cave. Entrance is over here. This is Langbrode's map digitized by me, so my name's on there as well. Uh, each of the Southern Arizona Grottoes conservation chairs have this map. And just so you know is that I have a map. Uh, CAG, SAG, EGI, CCC, they all have a map. They're all keyed. If they show up online, I'll know. Uh, Forest Service has a map. Uh, that one's keyed because it's got graffiti written on it. I haven't given the Forest Service the digital copy yet, but that's keyed as well. So if it comes out that, some, that it was given out from Forest Service uh, and ends up online on any of the blogs, we'll know that as well. So here's the happy-go-lucky cave on there. and. We've got some graffiti. The graffiti was cleaned for the most part of it in, 19, in 2000, end of 2001 to 2003 through June, eight trips. 
2010, we had three trips in. We're on our third trip out on this, so we're recleaning it. So what are we up against? No, it's not Cameron. Um, <laughs> So lo and behold, we're talking lots and lots of tags. So we'll show some of these uh, arrows to go out. Some of them are painted. Multiple yes, multiple. Sometimes the arrows are going both directions. People probably put their own color arrows over other arrows uh, to show that they know where they're going. So that's, of course, a finger. There's somebody for scale. <laughs> Got to got to do that. So, so this is basically what we're up against. By from two weeks from now, when the next effort happens, all of these are going to be gone. Some of them are gone now. This is off in the big room. Yes, I put this in because yes, they're tagging underneath the ladder just to show that show they can. This is a 360 panorama by Bob Beecher. He, he happened to be there the same weekend we were on. Uh, uh, September 30th, and that's the 363 degree, degree high resolution. Went around there. And there's 49 different tags in here, and people for, oops, how do I get there? And people for scale. So that's what we're up against. So we've had two trips in, two, in 2017. We have some equipment for those people that haven't helped on the project. I really can, I'm all in on this. I've got. One in two weeks, second weekend of April, four, uh, second weekend in June, second week in August, we need it. We're going to be using equipment. We have 1,200 feet of this big pressure hose. We have 2,000 feet, 1,900 feet of uh, electrical wire. This uh, compressor pushes 170 PSI, pounds per square inch, out, goes into the cave. We break it into three individual teams. Uh, we have a regulator that goes out to three groups, and three different teams can attack anything you want. Additionally, we've gotten permission from uh, Coronado to use uh, some biogradable uh, solvents. We're, we'll go through the protecting of the cave uh, uh, for the covering that thing. We're trying to use as little of that as possible, but all of the sandblasting media, which it happens to be uh, glass beads, is some of that is not taking off the spray paint, the, the different things that we saw before. Some of it's acrylic, some of it's rubberized. The beads just bounce off. Uh, other, uh, some other parts of the of the of the spray paint is only coming off with solvents. Some of it's only coming off with sandblasting. We don't know. I'm not going to get into chemistry because I don't know it. Okay, so. Two weeks, we're going to have a Saturday morning uh, safety briefing. It's part of our stuff. We have PPE, personal protective equipment, PPE, helmets, gloves, face shields, uh, uh, shop glasses, uh, respirators, and stuff to keep our people uh, safe. We'll tell everybody how it works. We run a telephone into the cave. Marion was doing that in September to, to help us do that puzzle. Steve was helping it as well. Uh, then you move all the stuff into the cave, lots of buckets and stuff. So this was sort of an interesting slide. He's sandblasting. This comes down, comes out the high pressure hose, and then goes in. I had to figure out what color to show the crawlway out because pick a color that's not already on the wall, <laughs> <laughs> which was sort of hard. Okay, so. Uh, it gets dusty in there. They've got uh, glasses on and everything and stuff like this. Okay, in two weeks, news media is showing up. Television news media. They're showing up at 11 o'clock. We're going to have our safety briefing at, at 8:30. We're going to get them in and do before and after pictures. So they're going to be filming this. Uh, when I get to the en end of this talk, and we'll talk about it at 8:30 on Saturday morning. This is what this is what I need people doing two weeks from now, and then two months from now. A lot of equipment moves in. We have funnels to funnel into hoppers that hold the sand beads. We, we have blue tarps on the floor that goes underneath. And then we pick that all up, put it back into five-gallon buckets, haul it back out of the cave. And I've got sifters now. And the clogging problems that we had in September are gone. We've sifted all of the, the dust media. That was a real problem for. Uh, Mike and his team in room two here, 
because uh, they, they kept clogging that up. Now that I've got sifters, stainless steel sifters, we can get about 75% to 80% of the sand reusable. <sighs> okay, so got to have a before and an after. There's a little, s there's some on here. No, Nicole wasn't the one cleaning it. She was just the model. Uh, this is somebody else's stuff. Sorry, Nicole. Uh, the floor goes down, so the top part of this didn't get cleaned as well as it needed to. It did get cleaned up. Before, after, there is there is a film, a haze on there. Yes, no, we didn't get it all. We sure got a lot of it, though. So this is from September. These yellow areas still needed more work. This is room two. This is outside the cave. That's all done. Uh, we had stuff that we couldn't get off. We had sandblasting stuff in here, and we couldn't get it off. We had to come back in November uh, with... Uh, the biodegradable uh, uh, solvents. What do we do with that? Let's touch on that. I don't think I have any pictures in of that. We leave plastic on the floor. We spray on the, the solvent. We wait 10 minutes, and then we scrub it off, and then we rinse it off, and then we towel it off. And we take all of that, and we rinse it some more and towel it off. Pretty much four rinses for every time on. And then we take all of that stuff out of the cave with not without it touching the floor. Um, I would like to rinse it more, but we have a weight issue. As soon as we get into weight issue, we have a safety issue because we have to hold water in and hold, hold water out in the form of rags. So moving right along. So that's after September. None of the solvents are going to go over solventing. That's all going to be glass. The, the glass beads are inert. We're not going to do any solvent over any water. That's going to be a policy, and we haven't gotten there yet, so uh, it starts this next week. Um, this is after the first, that's what we got done in November. This is every single tag that we could find and touch was done, and then we cleaned up the areas in between here. Additionally, and, and this was done with 13 people, we had the hammer down. Um, additionally to that, oh, let, let's finish it. In 2010, this is 2010, this is uh, the first one, the second one, the third one. We were able to get everything done from the bottom of the three fissures done clear up through the main lake room. So with more people and better equipment, I think we can do the same thing. Let me back up one. I think that in uh, two weeks we're going to do all of this to the rabbit hole. Yeah, is this aggressive? I'm not kidding. We're going to... We're going to push this hard because in April, April, we're going to want to be starting down this happy little path. Okay, so that that's as far as we got in 2010. Why didn't we get it done? Because for two reasons. One, in August, when we were going to start into this, there was a monsoon event and the rabbit hole flooded. We lost our weekend. A couple weeks later was the fall ARA up in Flagstaff and... Coconino National Forest needed the, the, the equipment for a big tagging problem in Lava River f Cave. Immediate, immediately after that, it went up to Utah for BLM in Bloomington Cave near uh, St. George. So we lost the equipment. So that was, that was in 2010, and that's as far as we ever got in 2003. So in, in April and in June and August, None of this has ever been cleaned. This is stuff from the 70s graffiti that's been there for 30, 40, 50 years. So I just told and asked Nicole if she would be willing to, in two weeks, come out here with some of the solvents and carrying water because it's going to be hard. To very back of the cave, how hard is this going to be? Because we're going to have to do, do high-pressure hose all the way through the cave, all the way down here, da 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 and then back into there. Okay, moving right along. One other thing was the kiosk. The, the, the two-panel kiosk out front, this is what it looked like uh, a year and a half ago. Took some of the solvent out there and uh, was able to get most of this off, but it was still pretty gross. The Jeff Stevens has, has some, uh, some door building equipment because he owns the company and it's really cool. So lo and behold, if... Uh, when you clean up, when you take the polycarbonate out and replace it over, then clean it all off. 
Uh, it's back to being used. These are just shadows. It's, it's really nice now. So we've got the, be, the before and the after. So that part's done. OK. Way to go, Jeff. OK. What, five minutes? OK. Uh, Forest Service, as part of the proposal, said they ha that we had to use Forest, Forest Service approved signs in the cave. There are no Forest Service approved signs in the cave in Region 3 that I know of. And our signs have to be of a higher standard. They have to be, be able to be seen in complete darkness by somebody holding a, ca a, a uh, cigarette lighter and drunk. So. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, oh, we had somebody come out at midnight and he could hardly stand. Uh, Marion and, and Mike were there and he was hard to stand. He had a gun on his hip. It was really cool. Okay, in 2010, we put the, uh, we had these, uh, the, the signs we put in at 2003 were removed, 2009, 2010, and the tagging started almost immediately. So this is, we were, this is 2010. We we're only putting them on with one or two bolts. Yes, we had ladders, stuff like that. Sorry. Now we're doing it. This is this is just work. He can drill uh, stuff on here. Bolt, 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 bolt out. Okay. So they put in 14 signs. These little red things are entrance, outside, outside, out, 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 out. Even if you're off trail. So the goal is to get, and we're going to do some smaller ones farther back in the, the maze, so that you can see a lot reflective signs. And then, no, you're, you're pointed in the right direction. They're green there. The thing is that they will steal them. So that's sort of disappointing. Boom. Here's the challenge cost share, front page, background, um, uh, purpose, things like that. That got done. Thank you very much. Donations so far. Central Arizona Grotto donated $1,000 to project. Left over from the previous thing, we had a little over $1,500 of, uh, of work. We've already spent about $1,700, bucks, $1,800. Bucks. Uh, just donated some expansion nails, a lot of time and, and stuff, uh, towels, other things. So Henry Schneiker got the sign material, the white and green stuff. He's doing it something for Fort Stanton, and uh, uh, we got that. So we have all the reflected material. It's all donated in. EGI do promised 50 bucks. Whoever is from EGI that wants to give me 50 bucks, so I'll put it in the tag. Um, okay, last week I was called by. Um, Val Worker, NSS Conservation Fund will donate a thousand bucks for mat and, and would like matching funds for this. So at the ARA meeting in about four, half an hour, there's going to be a motion to request ARA money to do this, and I can double it by NSS money as well. Uh, what? Well, yeah, we probably could, but I'd like ARA money as well. So, fine. Okay. Um, Anybody else? Uh, David Zadonik said something. Some other people. Uh, Stuart Lindsay gave us a couple hundred bucks, uh, which and that basically paid for the the kiosk signs and some other stuff. So, uh, at this point, we've got twenty per the Forest Service schedule. We went just in those two trips and clean up and this, that, and the other. There were about twenty-eight thousand dollars in volunteer value, includes driving time, work time, food expendables, things like that on on, on the like. Yes, there's an Excel spreadsheet. Yes, I have all of the receipts. Yes, it automatically adds up because geeks do that. Um, and number of miles, number of hours, approximate estimates, and things like this. Schedule. We're uh, doing this in two weeks. Safety briefings. At, I'm starting at noon on Friday. Anybody that wants to show up at noon on Friday will go from t noon till about 5 o'clock in the evening. We have the group site for pepper sauce campground reserve. We're going to show up and there's a big, and this, now that we've got some money, we're going to do a big group feed on Saturday night. So please show up on Saturday. If you can only show up on Sunday, that is really useful because everybody's burnt out and we need fresh faces to eat, come in and play with this. Second, uh, second week in April, second week in June, and if we need it, second week in August. So we're, I'm doing the second weekend thing, and and for the people in EGI that have their Friday night meeting, uh, come on Saturday and Sunday, please. It, it, you can do that. Okay. Photography by these folks, and we're always looking for new people. So ask your friends and things like that. That's it.
All right, questions, Nicole. So com com completely without Forest Service permission, I ch I put the we put this over the sign, and it says, "Pepper sauce, uh, uh, don't do these things. Look or look for the outside." Really, and we're talking, P outside the K. Do you have enough light? Uh, gosh, what else does it say? Um, yeah. You know, those kind of things. No, no, it does. It's excess. No spray painting. Yeah, Bob. Okay, absolutely valid points. I would really this this same thing was happened with Buckner's Buckner's Caves in Indiana. It's got a uh, uh, it's an NSS uh, preserve. And the question for historic graffiti came up, and we had someone come in and look through as before we were going through. And, and find things that we shouldn't play with, and they got flagged, and we didn't touch them. If we have any archaeologists in here that want to come in and, and play with this, please do. Having said that, anything beyond the rabbit hole, I think the rabbit hole was dug open in 1971, and there's some people in the room that would know that better than I. It was earlier than that. Okay. Much earlier? Really? Okay. So... Um, if it's early si it's 60s, I'm thinking of the 50-year thing, the, the arbitrary. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's why any, any the, graf the historic graffiti would be in the front part of the case primarily. I would really like to see it. So anyway, out signs. Um, now we're back to questions. Any other questions? Bob. Okay. Okay, other questions? That's it. You survived all the talks. Back to you, Brian. Great.